If you want to give your kids a real adventure, send them to our camps in Alaska. I'd like to welcome you to Camp Lorraine here in Southeast Alaska on Bank Island. Camp Lorraine is one of three here in Alaska that serve our community. Where are our other two campers? A lot of the people here have only been introduced to God because of this camp. We're uh, coming into Olson's log dump and we're gonna pick up a couple campers for Camp Rain. Transportation out to these different camps is by boat. Uh, it can be by float plane, but mostly by boat is how we get out here. It's not connected by any roads. One of the challenges that we have um, with running camps in Alaska is we never know how many kids are going to come until the day that we get there to pick them up. So it's always a, a surprise how many classes we'll have and how many cabins we'll have. Um, but somehow God always works it out. He always sends us the right number. Have a good week! Yes. What time next Sunday? Um, let's shoot for about 9 o'clock. Yes. Got kids yeah, 21, I think, was the number. Good, they'll have some playmates. Yep, and we got like nine from Catch a Can or something. So it's next Sunday? Yep. At nine. At nine, yep. Bye. Push off that right now? Sure. That's deep enough, I can go ahead and go here. You got a life jacket? You do have a life jacket. I'm Andrew Weller, and I'm the only one from Petersburg going out to Camp Lorraine. Woohoo! A lot of our islands are named for the way they look. This little island behind you, I bet you can't guess it. Yeah, it's named for what it's got on it, two trees. When you pass Two Tree Island and you come around the bend, you're in vision of seeing our camp, Camp Lorraine, here on Bank Island in Southeast Alaska. It's been here for quite a few generations. A lot of uh, the older people, have been here at camp and now are sending their kids here. This summer camp was formulated by a man by the name of Elder Dawson. Elder Dawson wanted a place where young people throughout southeastern Alaska would be able to come and experience Jesus Christ. And so through his dreams and through his hardship, he formulated Vank Island Camp Lorraine Summer Camp. Lorraine is named after his wife. I grew up a heathen. I didn't know who Jesus was. My parents asked me if I wanted to go to a summer camp. And I said, sure. So they sent me here to Camp Lorraine. And it was here that I experienced camp for the first time. I learned the songs of the old rugged cross. I, I heard for the first time, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And I believe that was the seed that God planted in my life to begin a Christian walk and a Christian conversion. If you'd like to be a counselor or you'd like to participate and work here at a summer camp, just come on up. So if you're looking for a great summer job, consider working at Alaska Camps. We hire 12 to 15 college kids. I'm Lori Hosey, I'm the director. If you need an application, email me. Lori Hosey at gmail.com. We hire them and bring them up and tour them around for about eight weeks all over Alaska. Great summer job. We get you stipends, airfare, room and board, and the colleges that you go to will do a matching scholarship. Some of them are even 100%. This is the first time some of these kids have ever heard the name of Jesus, not in a swear, swearing sense. And Bible stories, we tell them Bible stories they've never heard about creation. They don't know about the cross. They come out here and you'll start telling a Bible story that you think is very familiar to children. And so you cut it off in the middle and say, we'll talk about this tomorrow. And then they just go crazy. No, 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 we gotta know what happened to him. So they don't let you leave until they've got the full story. And I, it's rewarding to be able to share just simple stories from the Bible with them and, and then have them repeat it. And also the songs that we sing get stuck in their heads and they get stuck in ours, unfortunately, sometimes. I praise the Lord my soul to keep I went to summer camps at Camp
Camp Tukaskoya out of Big Lake and Alaska summer camps is where I met Jesus for the first time. Jesus was introducing himself to me. It was the staff members, their devotion and their sacrifice for uh, spending a couple of weeks with all of us teaching us about Jesus. The young people are at, are at an impressionable age and the Holy Spirit can really touch their hearts and come to know Jesus as I did. I'm from Rango and I'm loving camp. We love camp! We're running about eight classes every couple hours and they're doing everything from kneeboarding and water skiing. I'm excited about tubing. And we even got some canoes out. Crafts classes and tie-dye. Kids spend their time building forts and doing Survivor Man and baking cakes and decorating them. Bink Island is a rainforest and um, you can see there's there are beautiful trees everywhere with moss and we actually have a whole campus here um, with various buildings and we can see there's a brand new roof on our gym here. We also use this as a chapel in our campfire area. And then on down the on down the way here, we have our essentially our mess hall, which is also our lodge. And there's a big, um, large fire bowl in there where we gather oftentimes on rainy days so the kids can sit in front of a warm fire. We have mostly new cabins, which has been a, a huge blessing. Thank you for this day, Lord, the last family. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. You may wonder what we eat up here because all of our camps are away from the nearest grocery store. We start in January planning the menu. We start usually in Vancouver, Washington, going to Costco, getting supplies. We watch for sales at Winco. We haul it all up to Seattle, Washington, where we put it on the barge. The barge ships it up. It's a, at least a month getting it up here. It's a process that starts way back then to get it to here today. Here at Camp Lorraine, we got a lot of different little projects to, between the moss and the moisture here. Things take its toll. Our caretaker's cabin is melting down because of the mold and the moss and different things. That's a project coming up here pretty soon. We have at least one more boys cabin to take care of. We are about nine miles away from, nine or 10 miles away from uh, the community of Wrangell, Alaska. On behalf of the board members here at Camp Lorraine, we'd like to thank you for your support. I am really, really impressed with the commitment of the local people. For example, the church at Wrangell and at Dillingham and Camp Took to commit their time and energy to these camps locally at the local level. And without them just holding those that together, I don't think these camps would exist. But they aren't big enough and strong enough to meet with the repairs that need to happen at these camps. But their commitment to it is fantastic. We have a camp on a lake called Aleknikik Lake. It's about a 10 mile ride by boat to get to it, but it is remote and beautiful. And pristine conditions. The camp's a little bit rustic, I would say. Kids love it there. The exciting thing about coming up Camp Polaris is coming to the point out here in Aleknagik and having the mothers put their child on our boat or the barge as we bring them up here to uh, Camp Polaris. Bristol Bay is the heart of fishing in Alaska and this year even though fishing was very poor at church on Sabbath they made an appeal what I need is pledges from people. There's a lot of kids that wanted to come but couldn't afford it. I've got a list and those kids are anxiously standing by their phone between now and Tuesday when camp starts for a call from me um, <laughs> telling them that I found the money for them to go. And even though this has been not a very good year for fish and the price isn't where they would like to have it, they made that appeal and had a list of all the potential campers who could come. And if you look around, every single one of these kids are here today because of those uh, fishermen in Bristol Bay. And they raised $4,500. And so we want to say a good, uh, wonderful thank you to them, each one. 
for making this possible. And if you're watching this, then you'll be able to see your students that you actually sponsored. This is a law school! This camp has been around long enough that you have now third and fourth generations that are actually going to this camp. Hi, my name is Brianna Clark. This is my third year to camp, and we just got done swimming, and it was very cold. This last week, we actually had a, uh, a parent say, oh, my mother went here, and I went here, and now she was bringing her eight-year-old here, so that was kind of exciting. out in these little communities. It's function before fashion. Hi, my name is Janelle Sundin and I've been staff here at Polaris for two years. This is Kent Polaris out at Dillingham in Bristol Bay. We're starting some group games now, so I should probably go, but before I do, let me explain one thing. I'm wearing a mosquito net to keep the bugs away. There are lots of little gnats here that I gotta stay away from. Anyway, I gotta go, but it's nice to meet you. Welcome to Camp Polaris. My name is Roderick Stickle. I come from Union College. I take International Rescue and Relief there. I, my home is in Alberta, Canada. And what drew me to Alaska camps really was just the chance to explore Alaska and get to have a great time here with all the people. For our camp, we hire the college kids which carry the load. We call them the brawn. And then we hire the brains. And we have cooks. We always need cooks and camp nurses and maintenance people and people that can drive and fix boats. I'm Chet Miller. I've been out here at Alaska camps for three years now. This is my first year as full-time waterfront. I enjoy dealing with the kids. The posies are probably one of the other main reasons I come out. They're very good with what they do. They've been doing it a long time and they really put together a good program. Every year it's a little different. This year we got a really strong staff, I would have to say. They're pretty good. We all get together and just kind of form a good team and try and make this happen and God leads the rest. Um, and we're just trying to show them um, God through through our actions in, in itself. So as, as long as we keep our sights on God, we're going to portray Him and we're going to try and get them to, to see that through us. We're all under construction. We're all being worked on. Nobody's perfect out here. We just got to make the right difference for these people and for ourselves at the same time. This is have to be next to God's country up here. It's amazing what, what talents will come out of people when they get up here. This is how we get them up in the morning. One, two, one, two, three, four. Here. We got a lot of fun, so many good things planned. We canoeing, we got crafts. But one of the challenges we do have of being in this part of Alaska is that the uh, campers or the ones that come to camp here, they come from a lot of uh, diverse families. We have mostly native children in this area and they come from a lot of drug and alcohol abuse. A lot of families that live together for many generations. And the teachers will have these kids write essays. And I had one of them tell me one time, she's a sixth grade teacher, and she said, every time I ask my kids to do a writing assignment, it's all about camp, things that happen at camp. And she said, let's, let's move on past camp and find something else to write about. And she said, they couldn't do it. Their little heaven was camp, and that's what they write about. It's their happy life at camp. We fall in love with, with them. They're just, they're just a great bunch of kids. One of the things that we need here would be a landing craft, a small landing craft that we could haul a backhoe in here. 
so we could haul one during the summer and do some work around here because we got areas we want to get leveled off so we can put in some nice bathrooms, a couple more cabins. Uh, I know that we have some cabins over here that we, the, the people in Dillingham have raised money to, and we built those a couple years ago, but we want to replace all these other cabins and we need to get some leveling done and so it'll be a real challenge. So that's one of the things that we're praying for right now and trying to save our money for is to get a small 23 foot or 24 foot landing craft. Again, I think if there was nothing out here but tents, these people would still have camp. They're not gonna fold because we don't support them. They still have camp, they believe in their mission for these kids and with or without our support, they're gonna have camp out here. They're gonna teach these kids about Jesus. Come next year to Alaska and you can experience this beauty and all these little bugs that keep flying around my head too. Please support Alaska Summer Camps.